7.2 Solving a system of linear equations using the elimination method. So just as a reminder, a system of linear equations is two lines. But it's two lines, that's the system, and the solution to a system of linear equations is where they cross. That point right there. So the solution to this system would be 4, comma 4. In 7.1, we solved the system of linear equations graphically, so we would draw them on a piece of grid paper and look for the dot where they crossed. This elimination method is going to work with equations. We're going to use algebra to come up with that same point. It's a much more accurate method, and once you get good at it, it will be faster. Let's solve this system using elimination. I've got 2x equals 15 plus 3y, and I've got 5x plus 3y equals 27. Now remember, when we're looking at equations, we can solve for a variable if I've only got one variable in that equation. But in both of these equations, I've got an x and a y. That makes it a little more complicated. I need at least two equations to be able to solve this. But before I can solve it using the algebra we know, I'm going to have to eliminate one of those variables. And that's where this method comes in. Now, one of the things we need when we're looking at using the elimination method is we have to set it up where our x's and our y's and our equal sign and our constant are all in line. If I look right here, my x's are in line, but my y's are not in line, my equal sign is not in line, and my constants are not in line. The elimination method won't work well unless we move things around. I like to set them up with x's and then y's and then my constant on the right hand side of the equal sign. So I'm going to have to move that first one around. All right, I want to move the 3y to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 3y from this side, subtract 3y from that side. Now I've got 2x minus 3y, and these two are going to cancel each other out. So that equals 15. Now that's in the right form to deal with. It's going to be it's in the same form as the other. So let's rewrite it over there. Now I'm going to add the two equations. 2x plus 5x gives me 7x. Minus 3y plus 3y. That gives me 0y's. 15 plus 27 gives me 42. Now the whole goal of this method was to eliminate one of the variables. And if we notice here, we have eliminated that y. I've got zero y's left. And that happened because I had a negative 3y up here and a positive 3y down there. Those two numbers cancel each other out. I now have an equation with only one variable. I'm going to rewrite it. And because there's no y's, I don't even have to bother writing it in. I've got an equation with only one variable. And I can continue solving this using traditional algebra. Divide both sides by 7. x equals 6. I'm now half finished. Here, I've achieved one of the primary goals of the elimination method. I have eliminated those y's. So in order for the elimination method to work, either the x's or y's, it doesn't matter which, one of those two variables have to have the same coefficient in front, but opposite signs. That way, when you add them together, they eliminate each other. Let's rewrite that, except I'm not going to rewrite the uh, zero y in this time, because there's no point. There's none of them. 7x equals 42. Now I've got an equation that can be solved quite easily. I'm going to divide both sides by 7. And I'm left with x equals 6. Now we've got our x-coordinate. We still need to find our y-coordinate of, uh, of that solution. So in reality, we're only half done right now. In order to find the rest of my solution, I need to find my y-coordinate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that x equals 6. And I'm going to sub it into one of my two original equations. I don't care which one you pick. Pick whichever one looks easier and go with that. 
So let's go with equation number two. Five x plus three y equals twenty-seven. So I'm going to sub x equals six into that equation. So anywhere there was an x, I'm going to put in a six instead. So five, swap the x out for a six plus three y equals twenty-seven. I've only got one variable now. Now I can do that solution. Five times six is thirty plus three y equals twenty-seven. I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides. I now have 3y equals 27 minus 30 gives me a negative 3. Last step to get y all by itself, I'm going to divide by 3. Divide both sides by 3, and I end up with y equals negative 1. So what we've got now is we've got our solution. And that solution is 6 on the x, negative 1 on the y. Remember that is always written as an x and a y. But before we stop here, we should double check our answer and make sure that that is a valid solution. This next step is important. It's like a free answer key because we can check to see if we got it right. I'm going to use one of the equations. Let's go with 2x minus 3y equals 15. you really want to be sure, you should check actually both equations, not just one of them. But we are going to take this solution and fit it in. So I put my 2 down. Instead of the x, I'm going to put in a 6 minus 3. And instead of the y, I'm going to put the minus 1 from my solution equals 15. If I collect all my like terms, if I end up with the same thing on both sides of the equal sign, this check has worked. So 2 times 6 gives me 12. Minus 3 times a minus 1 gives me plus 3 equals 15. 12 plus 3 gives me 15. And take a look at that. 15 equals 15. My check has worked. This right here is, is correct. That is my solution. 6 and negative 1. Moving on to the next example, we're going to solve this system using elimination again. Now as I look at it, first thing you should check, are your x's lined up? Yes. Are my y's lined up? Yes. And my constants are lined up too. So I'm not going to have to rearrange things to get it to work properly. But as I look at it, I don't have the same coefficient on my x's. I don't have the same coefficient on my y's. It's going to take a step or two before we're going to be able to actually eliminate the variables. So what I need to do is I need to pick either the x's or the y's and do some work to make those have the same coefficient. I'm going to start with these x's. When I look at this 2 and this 8, I'm looking for the lowest common multiple of those two. And 8 happens to be something they'll both multiply into. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this first equation. I want to change it so it's got a negative 8x. Not just a 2x, but a negative 8x. In order to do that, I'm going to take the whole thing and times it by minus 4. Now 2 times 4 will give me my 8, but I also have to multiply in that negative to get the negative 8x. Now I'm going to take that minus 4, I'm going to multiply it into all the parts of that equation. So 2x times a negative 4 gives me negative 8x. Minus 7y times a minus 4 gives me plus 28y equals, and 5 times minus 4 gives me minus 20. The other equation, this time I don't actually need to change it. I've got an 8x, those two are going to work out just fine. Minus 6y equals negative 2. Now I was concentrating on the x's, and the y's will be what the y's will be. We're not worried about that, we're only worried about making sure one pair of variables eliminate. Let's add them together. Minus 8x plus 8x gives me 0x. In fact, I didn't even need to write that piece down. 28y minus 6y gives me plus 22y. And minus 20 and minus 2 gives me minus 22. Let's rewrite that again. I've got 22y equals minus 22. Divide both sides by 22. I've got my y part of the solution is 
minus one. Put a box around that. I'm coming back for that in a minute. Let's do the other part. I'm going to pick one of my equations and substitute that y into it. Let's go with the first one. 2x minus 7y equals 5. I'm going to sub in the y equals minus 1. 2x minus 7. So instead of my y, I'm going to put in my minus 1 equals 5. 2x plus 8 oh, plus 7 equals 5. Let's subtract 7 from both sides. I now have 2x equals minus 2. Divide both sides by 2. My x equals minus 1. So my solution appears to be minus 1 and minus 1. Remember, that's an x and then a y. But let's just be sure. Let's run a check. I'm going to run that second equation. I've got 8x minus 6y equals minus 2. Sub in my minus 1, minus 1. So instead of the x, I'm going to put in a minus 1, minus 6 times. Instead of the y, I'm going to put a minus 1 equals 2. 8 times minus 1 gives me minus 8. Minus, minus 6 times minus 1 gives me plus 6 equals minus 2. Plus, minus 8 plus 6 gives me minus 2 equals minus 2. My check works. So this is my solution. That is my answer. All right, one more example of solving a system of linear equations using elimination. So when we look at this, my x's are lined up, my y's are lined up. Okay, notice how my equal sign and my numbers are not lined up. So before we start actually doing the elimination method, let's get everything lined up nicely. This 51 is the piece I'm going to need to move. I take this piece right here. Let's move that 51. I'm going to subtract 51 from that side, subtract 51 from that side. I now have 7x plus 3y equals negative 51. All right, let's arrange how I need it. Let's move it back. All right, now I can start looking at using the elimination method. If I look at my x's or my y's, remember I have to eliminate either the x or the y. I need the same coefficient on both x's or both y's, but the opposite signs. I don't quite have that on either of those two. Now, it doesn't matter which one you decide to eliminate. It'll, they'll both work. But in this case, I'm going to eliminate the y's. I'm going to make those two pieces the same. And the main reason I'm going, I picked those ones, they're lower numbers, but one's already negative and one's already positive. So I don't have to mess with the signs very much. So in order to do this, we need to find my LCM, lowest common multiple of 2 and 3. Now, 2 and 3 will both multiply together to give me 6. So, if I take this first one, in order to turn that 2y into a 6y, I'm going to times it by 3. And in order to turn that 3y on the bottom one into a 6, I'm going to times that 1 by 2. Now, it often works that you would take this one and times it by this 3 right here, and then you would take the bottom one and times it by the 2 in front. That will always work, but it won't always give you the simplest terms. All right, let's continue here. So 3x times 3 gives me 9x. Minus 2y times 3 gives me minus, 6, minus 6y. And 11 times 3 gives me 33. Work on the second one. 7 times 2 gives me 14x. 3 times 2 gives me plus 6y. And 51 times 2 gives me minus 102. Now, just to double check, I've got a minus 6y and I've got a plus 6y. They're opposite signs. I'm fine. If I didn't have opposite signs, I would have to go back up and pick one of these two pieces right here and multiply it by a negative instead of a positive, just so I can flip the sign on that piece I'm working with. But I don't have to in this one. Let's add those together. 9 plus 14. That should give me 23x. Minus 6y plus 6y gives me 0y. And 33 minus 102 gives me negative 69. But I didn't need to bother writing that 0y, so I've got 23x equals minus 69. Divide both sides by 23. I'm left with 
x equals negative 3. Half done. Let's find our y coordinate. Pick one of the equations, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to pick the first one. We are going to sub in minus 3. To finish off this question, we need to find our y coordinate of our solution. So I'm going to pick one of the equations, 3x minus 2y equals 11, and that's only because it looks a little simpler than the other one. And I'm going to sub in x equals negative 3. So to do that, anywhere where there's an x, I'm going to put in that negative 3. 3 times negative 3 minus 2y equals 11. Okay, start calculating those numbers. 3 times negative 3 gives me negative 9 minus 2y equals 11. Let's isolate that y, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides, which leaves me with negative 2y equals 20. Divide both sides by 2, negative 2 to be more specific, and I'm left with y equals minus 10. It looks like our solution is negative 3 and negative 10. But before we go any further, we should actually run a check. Make sure it actually is that. I'll pick one of the equations. Let's go with 7x plus 3y plus 51 equals 0. Sub in our numbers. 7 times. Instead of x, we're going to put in minus 3 plus 3 times. And instead of y, we're going to put in minus 10 plus 51 equals 0. Run through the numbers. 7 times minus 3 gives me minus 21. 3 times minus 10 gives me minus 30. Plus 51 we already had. And we're checking to see if that equals 0. Minus 21 and minus 30 gives me a minus 51. Minus 51 plus 51 gives me 0 equals 0. The check works. So this is my solution.